introduce both teams. First, our visitors, reserves. Number three, Connor Monahan. Number 21, Dylan Gunther. Number 23, Sam Malo. Number eight, Sean Jalbert. Number 13, Jake Williams. Number nine, Matt Provost. Number 18, Jacob Provost. Number 15, Trenton Hill. Number 22, Alex Nadu. Number 25, Tyler Yasu. Number 19, Trey Yasu. Number 16, Noah Martinson. And number 24, Jason Angelica. Now for the Munson starters. Number six, Kyle Monahan. Number 10, Ryan Monahan. Number 12, Logan Gary. Number 11, Jaden Messina. Number 17, Aiden Graves. Number 7, Ben Malo. Number 14, Scott Watson. Number 4, Pete Miller. Number 20, Luke Hedspeth. Number two, Connor Santos. And number five, Justin Folks. The Mustangs are coached by Josh Usina. Now for the Red Hawks. First the reserves. Number 21, Ari Venegas. Number 24, Connor Wakus. Number one, Hunter Hannum Wells. Number two, Timmy Barrington. Number 11, Ethan DeMaio. Number eight, Tommy Kirkalonis. Number five, Kip Newman. Number 13, Sam Battisti. Number 15, Sam Felton Emmerich. Number 22, Ryan Loveland. And number seven, Noah Graves. Now for the Frontier Starters. In goal, number 95, Peter Bronke. Number 17, Alex Georgita. Number four, Noah Jakes. Number 14, Tenzin Sindhu. Number 18, Ben Morse. Number 19, Doug Haneski. Number 10, Zach Hamilton. Number 6, Ben Arnold. Number 12, Tyler Mayrand. Number 3, Ethan LaFleur. And number 9, Connor Bagden. The Red Hawks are coached by Dale Totman. Would you please rise for the playing of the national anthem?
Welcome to Frontier Community Access Television's broadcast of Frontier Regional Sports. Tonight's boys' soccer matchup is a sin. I'm Alex Sharp, and I'll be joined in a bit by Karsten Carey. Thank you for watching. Tonight's going to be quite a quite a treat as uh, our reigning Western Mass Division Two champions take on the reigning Division Four state champions from Munson. Beautiful night here at Frontier. Full moon coming in. Quite the glare here in the booth, but we'll work One, through it. Two, So we're about to get underway here at Frontier Regional School. Boys soccer matchup between Frontier Redhawks and Munson. Frontier is trying to become the first team in Western, in Western Mass in any sport to qualify for the tournament. So this is definitely a big night for Frontier. Ref gives the okay and we'll get underway here. Munson's taking it up the left side. And Alex Giorgito will put a stop to that attack. Throw in will go to Frontier here. Puts it into number four, Noah Jocks. Plays it back to Sindhu. Passes it over to Morris. Up the left side to Mayrand. Some nice passes by Frontier, but they give it right back to Munson over here. So a bit of a slow start for Frontier this season. Two two early ties to Monument Mountain and Mount Greylock, despite all the all the hype surrounding this team. But since then, they've really rebounded well, winning all of their games since in pretty easy fashion. Balls played in. And that's going to be a penalty. It's going to be a Munson ball. And Munson, last year, Division Four state champion, so a big year for them. Graduated a lot of key players, but they, they're always strong and definitely no one to take lightly for Frontier here. The three and four record by Munson may be a little deceiving. They've had some close losses to Pope Francis, to Central, and to uh, a Lennox team that 
is supposed to be not bad this season. There's a little confusion tonight about the start time, so my co-host Carson Carey, he'll be here soon. But until then, it's just me going solo. It's going to be a corner kick for Munson over here. Number 10, Zach Hamilton, is coming over to the sideline. It looks like the ref has asked him to remove some jewelry of some sort. Or maybe he's got some blood. Not quite sure what's going on. Looks like he's going to leave the game, though. And number 21, Ari is coming on. So here comes the corner kick. And that'll get cleared by number six, Ben Arnold, up to Ethan LeFleur. You know, you wouldn't know it by the long sleeves on some of these players, but it's really quite a beautiful night. I don't think the long sleeves might be a bit of overkill here. Sometimes you just need to face the cold. And that's going to be cleared out of bounds. Over to the parents. Throw-in's going to come from Ben Morris here. There's Bagman with the ball in the center. Sends it up to the middle to Hineski. Oh, a nice ball up to LaFleur, but it looks like he appears to be offside. Great idea by Hineski. He's always a great passer, and he really keeps the team together there in the midfield. Munson is going to play the ball up the left side. Plays it up to Lafleur, and the keeper's going to settle that one. He punts it out, and right to a frontier player. The glare is really something else here tonight from the Sun. Sorry if I miss get some names here, but it's pretty difficult to see. This is also spirit work week here at Frontier, and that's why you're going to see a lot of fans here tonight. And, yeah, you know, school really prides itself on its spirit. So it's good to see everyone out here supporting each other. So even though Munson graduated a lot of players last year, the experience that their young guys got playing for a state championship team is really going to be invaluable for them for the rest of their careers. And same with Frontiers players who have experienced the postseason and multiple Western Mass uh, championship runs. And Munson looking for a counterattack here, coming up the left side. And that ball's going to go to the goalkeeper, Peter Bronchi. And I'm just being joined here in the booth by my co-host, Karsten Carey. He's not late. He's actually a very uh, on-time gentleman. But we were given a 6.30 start time for tonight's game, which was changed due to the JV game being canceled. Alex? I'm here. <laughs> All right, good to be here. It is, isn't it? Quite the glare. Quite the glare. I'm sure this will uh, start to fade as the sun dips below the horizon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, the sun does set here in Western Mass every once in a while. Yeah, once every uh, <laughs> 12 or so hours. <laughs> That's, of course, not exact because things change over the course of the year. Very true. Just as this result will uh, surely change over the course of the <laughs> game, as I doubt 0-0 zero, zero will be our final score here. Well, don't count your chickens before they hatch. <laughs> uh, so far, a pretty uneventful game, just to fill you in. Two offside penalties by LaFleur already, but 
you know, these are the reigning D4 state championship champions, so can't take them lightly here for Frontier. No, you cannot. Munson coming off a great year, although they were without their two best players last year, one of which who was the Western Mass Player of the Year. Bronke punts it out past midfield. Control by Ben Morris. Sends the ball up to Lafleur. Taken by the Munson defender swiftly. Possession has been about even so far in this game. Not, no chances yet really for a goal from either side. Oh, that's some speed from that left wing right there. Totally beat our right back. Jock to the ball. And there goes the sun. We'll see it again in the morning. Ethan with the ball. Oh, oh. great save by the keeper. The Fleur's really got to finish those. Yeah, that's a breakaway right there. And another one. Go! Second time's the charm for Lafleur. <laughs> yeah, seriously, he's lucky he got another chance right there to redeem himself. Yeah, defense really got to pick him up. You know the saying, fool me once, shame on you. <laughs> fool me twice, shame on me. Exactly. Number 19, Doug Kineski with the assist on that. Very nice pass. He's had a few, few great looks already today. I believe that is Hineski's first point of the year. Is it really? Yes, it is. You wouldn't expect that from a player like him, but... No, a seasoned veteran, even starting games last year. I'm sure he's just warming up to things in the new Frontier era. In the eighth minute, Frontier goal, scored by number three, Ethan LaFleur, assisted by number 19, Doug Hineski. And Ben Arnold's going to throw this one in. Massive chuck from Arnold oh. to Lafleur. Oh, just missing that wow. left post. Three chances already for Lafleur, pretty much point blank. Controlled by the Revs import, Connor <laughs> Bagnon. Plays around the defender, carries the ball, sends it up the side to Ethan Lafleur. I was saying earlier, it really you wouldn't know how warm it is out by the apparel on these players. A lot of long sleeves here. I don't know what to think about that. Yeah, you think they'd be uh, used to the cold and able to brace it. Yeah, they've had some long postseason runs into the near the winter, so you know. Nice play by the goalie. Good attempt by Hineski. Getting under that ball. Flicking it right at the goal. Hineski's definitely making his presence be felt right now. Morse looks up the side. Marin plays it to Hineski. Plays it back to Lafleur. They are favoring that matchup on the left side with Lafleur and Munson's right back. It looks like Lafleur has some sort of hand injury, doesn't it? On that right hand. Didn't yeah. see anything on the injury report today, but... No, you know. Not everything's disclosed all the time. <laughs> this is true. That's the third offside penalty today for Frontier. Looks like we've got about uh, 200 in attendance tonight. That's a generous estimate. Yeah, maybe. Sometimes the stands fill as the game progresses. I 
I'd say we're lucky if we see 100 tonight, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? It seems last night game was a lot more supported than tonight. Well, I mean, that was our debut. Everyone was coming out. That's true. It could be the weather. This is a beautiful night. Well, maybe the weather is making people do other things. Maybe. Dale Totman with the assist. Tyler Marin. You wonder if any other coach has better hair than Dale Totman. You really do wonder that. His barber, God bless him. <laughs> <laughs> this Munton coach has some hair, but not, not quite the same, too. <laughs> Good pass. Ooh, Georgita. Oh, Georgita's carrying it a little too long for a defender there. That's true. Another seasoned veteran on this team. There's so many veterans here that have been through the playoff atmosphere and just know what they're doing out here. Georgita with the long send, looking for Lafleur again. Just a little too high. So since Zach Hamilton exited the game early before you got here, he, ha he has not came back into the game. So he, oh, now he's coming up. Looks like he might have a wrist injury. Yeah, he's shaking that left wrist a little bit. But he will re-enter the game here. I don't think a wrist should uh, affect his playing too much tonight. Definitely not. And Hamilton will come on for, who's he coming on for there? That'd be Ari Venegas. Uh, yes. The glare got me, couldn't quite see it. Ryan Loveland first to congratulate Venegas coming onto the bench. <laughs> Always great spirit from Rye Guy. Always a reliable teammate to have on that bench. Strong thrown by Arnold again. Good defense by Munson. Arnold lining up for another throw in. His throw in's almost as accurate and well placed as a corner kick of Frontier. I mean, he is, he is a pitcher. He is. Some arm strength there. Ooh. Another good clearance by Munson defense. The floor plays in the middle. Stopped by the Munson defender once again. Definitely. Finally carrying it out of their own half. Yeah. Definitely some nice... Nice plays by the Munson defense, so keep it at only one goal so far today. Not sure where that ball was going. Bagden plays it back to Hamilton. He tries to play it back to Bagden. Can't quite get it there. Munson looking up the left side. I tell Good ya. defense by Jocks. There are some fans here, but you wouldn't you wouldn't quite know it's Spirit Week by the atmosphere here. It seems very lull. Maybe some people had a tough Monday. Well, we can uh, hope uh, that that changes. As the night progresses, more people start flowing in as the lights turn on. Yeah. The pep should definitely increase here, especially because it's Spirit Week. Especially with Twin Day right around the corner. I don't know. Oh, good stop by Sindhu. Sophomore defender. Oh, 
Maran takes it, looks up that left side, can't quite get it to the floor. Munson's who might be using their first. Oh, never mind. Frontier putting all their men back on defense. Only keeping the Fleur up to cherry pick towards the half field line, as he usually does. Munson with zero ability to create a shot right now. Frontier is just putting too many men back. And too many skilled defenders standing in the way of these Munson attackers. A nice high flying airplane over there in the distance is uh, New York to, S to Copenhagen SAS A330. Courtesy of Flight Radar 24. Now, isn't Copenhagen <laughs> that way, Alex? <laughs> Well, you know, you got to go north. You got to go north and up and over the Atlantic to get over to Europe. And, you know, that's, that's the only thing that we see in the sky tonight. Nothing else. No clouds. Just a beautiful night for some soccer. Just these Tuesday night lights. Monday night lights. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long weekend for all of us. <laughs> and Ben Arnold trots off the field here. Arnold remaining is one of only a few Frontier players to have scored a game so far. Standing among Bagdon and Hamilton and LaFleur. And LaFleur. And Timmy Barrington was the one who entered the game for Ben Arnold. Good clearance by Frontier. Again, sending it back up. One of the questions I have early on might not be too important to the game, but who's the guy in the golf cart over there just sitting there? And why does he need the golf cart? <laughs> that is very suspect. <laughs> Alex? We'll, we'll have to get to the bottom of this. We will. Does he, is he associated with Frontier? <laughs> <laughs> is he just looking for an extra good seat over there? Uh, who knows, really? Oh, he, you know what? He could be a cameraman. I don't know if I'm seeing a camera over there. Oh, just a flood throw in there. I don't know what happened on that throw in. Missed the ball. Good pass by Connor. So Hamilton can't quite control it at the top of the 18. And Munson gets an attempt. Thwarted by Morris. Haneski looking for a deep send to Lafleur. Bagdon not getting it there. He's got to be careful playing around with it. So close to the goal. And here we got tonight's trivia question of the game. How many times has Italy won the World Cup prior to their win in 2006? If you're watching this, you can leave your answer in the comments, and uh, we'll reveal the answer later, later in the game, and uh, you can see if you were right. I would say three times, Alex. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully no one cheats on this either. We, we would not like to see that. I've got to do the research myself here. Not, not up to date on my trivia. <laughs> Munson with a free kick. And I think we're ready to reveal the answer to our trivia question. It's three times. So you got it right, Karsten, and spoiled it for the audience. Just playing the game, Alex. <laughs> Just trying to participate here. <laughs> Spoiler alert up in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just forget we said that. And Peter Brunk will make easy work of that ball. Munson not able to really control it. Just kind of kicking it as they see fit. And a foul called. 
on the Munson player. Didn't quite see any contact there, but somebody did. Georgita with the long ball. Looking for the Fleur Mayor and can't quite get it. Funny things going on inside the stadium. Can't quite disclose it, but, you know. Always a good time here at Frontier. Marin looking for the long send. Don't have Ben Arnold out there anymore to throw it in. Easily dispelled by the Munson defender. And put to a goal kick. Just under 18 minutes to go in the first half. Score remains 1-0, and Munson has, has had zero real chances to score a goal. Bagging with it up top. He's got time. Gives a send to Ethan again. Just misses. Just a fearless goalie here for Munson. He's already made it. And it looks like that was offside anyways. Two defenders succeeds, gives it up to Hamilton, puts it to Haneski in the middle. Got lucky there. Hamilton keeping the ball alive on the corner. Looking in the middle. Could not quite get under that ball. And Connor Wakis and Ben Arnold are going to enter the game here. Coming in for Barrington and Lafleur, who has done a good job on those early looks, looking to pass that Munson back line and get his infamous breakaway. You know, Lafleur's uh, soccer game is impressive, but his fantasy football team may be even more impressive so far this year. That's true. Is he 4-0? Four, four no? I believe he took one loss, but the other team was the highest scoring team that week, so... Mm. Still definitely looking good for him for his chances of making playoffs in the prestigious league. Yes, he made short work of uh, Team Carey this weekend, <laughs> winning by about 113 to 69, I believe. Well, you are struggling, aren't you, with that Dalvin Cook torn ACL, too? That's true. The second early pick for Carson Carey to get injured <coughs> yeah, for the know. entire season. Well, Team Stripe hasn't had any injuries yet, but they're looking at going 0 4. But they are the reigning champions of the league, so. That's true. Almost looking like the Panthers of last year. <laughs> After making it to the Super Bowl, can't even get to the playoffs. Well, Team Stripe won the Super Bowl last year, so. Even worse. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, if you're watching, there are some people in the stadium. They're not making a lot of noise. No, I almost forget they're there. It's long been a tradition at Frontier to have somebody very close to your heart wear your jersey <laughs> when you're playing for your team. Yeah, you love to see that, especially here on Spirit Week. Yeah. It becomes typical for uh, <laughs> girlfriends to wear the jerseys of their boyfriends, or for boyfriends to wear the jerseys of their girlfriends. Exactly. At large games. Exactly. Although it seems there is one outlier with that tonight. <laughs> Some rules are meant to be broken. <laughs> exactly. This is the 21st century, man. Love has no limits. Exactly. Good try by Wakis on that right corner. Couldn't quite get by that left back.
And there's Brandon Robinson entering <laughs> in the classic Logic sweatshirt. Oh, terrible kick. Oh, Connor looking for goal. If you ever see anybody Bagging. wearing a white sweatshirt that says everybody a lot of times in the back, that's, that's your man Brandon. Always a reliable fan to come to these games. We've got so many great fans. We, we should just highlight one fan every game. Fan of the game. That's a great idea. <laughs> Munson with an attempt inside. Good defense by Jocks. It's Getting really that defender out of the way. Yeah, really the first action Munson has had near the frontier goal all night. Sure hope Bronchi doesn't fall asleep in this game. And it looks like the Munson parental units have just said no to the bleachers and are sitting on the field over there. Looks like it. Corner not to anybody specifically. Hamilton looking for Wakis. Munson good passing on the interior. Looking up that right corner, the ball is just too strong. It's going to be a goal kick for Bronchi. Risky play by Morse there. Some of the Munson fans didn't love it, did they? They did not take kindly to that. That ball out of trouble. He's got some good hands on him, doesn't he? He's got a good foot, too. Are you saying he only has one foot? No, he's got that nice, nice right foot sending that out the way. Oh, Munson. Couldn't get under that ball either. He just toe balled it. Well, he did get under it, didn't he? He got under it a little too much. Didn't get under it the right way. Well, you want to get on top of it, don't you? Well, if you want to hit it into the ground. <laughs> He's got to be a little more crafty to <laughs> fool a goalie veteran like Bronchi. Drogito with the kick. That's a good foot right there. Yeah, not too much accuracy, but sure is enough power. <laughs> Morris looking for Barrington on the wing. Plays it back to Hamilton. Looking at Wakis, gets it. Here's an attempt. The, the dribble was just a little too far off his foot there. Yeah, first touch wasn't too good. The fans, man. <laughs> and Wakis and Barrington will come off the field here. Returning with Fleur. And Arnold to their respective spots. Sinu looking in with the short pass. Almost got Lafleur there. Fooled the defense. Couldn't quite get it to happen. Mayron. Oh. oh, with a fancy footwork. Taking it around two months in defenders before he can't keep it anymore. Good fighting by Bagman there. Munson looking up the field for a prayer. This is just back and forth soccer right now. Nobody can quite gain possession for more than 10 seconds. Marin looking up again. Nice ball up the left side. Oh, great move by Lafleur, but bodied by that Munson back line defender. We 
got lucky there. It's a one on four for Munson. You're not going to get past Georgita with weak moves like that. No, Georgita can't quite keep it though, doing a little too much dribbling again. You got to have more sauce, as they'd say, to get by him. Yeah. You got to have him get lost in the sauce. <laughs> Far send with that throw in. Oh. Got a head on it. Couldn't quite get the angle. Corralled by Bronchi. <laughs> Frontier throwing. Marin looking up early on. Bagdon. Another send to the floor who's on sides again. Able to keep it and rips another goal. Goal! I think that's a new PR for me. I believe that would be too. LaFleur with a great footwork to keep it. Good first touch. Got it right around that keeper. He's just a scoring machine so far this season, huh? He is. His players are doing a great job of getting him those long balls he likes, though. This system under Topman just works perfectly with this Frontier squad. Who picked up the assist on that, did you see? Frontier goal in the 32nd minute, scored by number I'm sure three, we'll find out Ethan LaFleur, assisted by number 12, Tyler Marion. And he almost had another one right there. That would be Marion with the assist on the first one, in case you didn't hear it. Munson has got to control those long balls if they even want to stay in this game. Frontier running away with it in the first half. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's any light at the end of the tunnel for Munson until they actually mount some type of attack here. Frontier staying on sides. Bagdon has it. Ethan has it again. Bagdon looking for goal. And a strong attempt from the outside. Wow. That would have been a highlight real play from Arnold. A whole lot of shots so far, that's for sure. From one of the teams. Yeah, this is very uneven so far possession-wise and shots-wise. Another long send. Connor hitting yeah. it over. And there's another goal. And a great goal. I've lost my voice already. I can't, I can't do any more goals. The attack has just been relentless so far tonight. Great tip over the goalie and the defender by Bagdon. And the assist from Georgita. Assisting all the way from his own 18. And the assist from Alex Jordina on that play. So every goal has had a different assister. A lot of different people getting involved in the offense here for Frontier. Frontier goal in the 34th minute. Scored by number nine, Connor Bagdon. Assisted by number 17, Alex Georgita. Frontier with another send. They're not giving up on Lafleur. Lafleur just able to keep it in bounds. Although, how efficiently is unknown. Lafleur not happy with that call. Venegas and Graves looking to make an appearance in tonight's game. Well, Venegas has already been in, but it will be Graves' debut on the night. Number seven. It'll be interesting to see how the senior responds to this situation in which they only stand to lose. Definitely a lot of pressure on these boys from Frontier. A lot of high expectations. 
but so far they've performed very well in the season. Bagum with a nice flick of the head towards a goal. Not enough power to cause any real damage to the Munson keeper. Clear handball from the Munson striker. Georgita immediately putting it into action. Not much there. <laughs> no, he's got to at least look for a player. Georgita controlling it. Playing it back very nicely to Morse, who tries to clear it again. Jock changing positions of the field. Bagan calling for the ball in the middle. Ethan gives it to him. Sending Lafleur again. Munson defender is too fast. Graves touching the ball for the first time tonight. Arnold and Haneski coming off after a very successful night. Haneski with that superb assist. And Arnold with his great play overall and one earth shattering strike from beyond the 18 that was nearly Sports Center top 10 worthy. Nearly. Marin playing it back into the center. So, a uh, little Frontier Sports update. I think every one of our teams is. And a floor with a chance. Offsides. Offsides. Back to what I was saying, I think every Frontier team find themselves at the top of the division, except for the football team, which is really right in the battle. Only one loss to Greenfield, and Greenfield has just lost to Tech, so Frontier is heading to Tech this Friday for a very big uh, Friday night football game. Frontier will have an opportunity to avenge that unfortunate overtime loss. Yeah, but other than that, I think volleyball finds himself at the top, field hockey, boys cross country. I don't know about girls cross country, actually. I believe girls soccer also is oh, just a little bit yeah. clear from the top. I think they're in second place right now. Yeah, with Mahar controlling that elite area. Graves taking contact. Clearly did not like that. Putting his hands up in yeah. disbelief. He, he's not happy right now. You can see that for sure. De definitely just got to move on, though. It is what it is, and you got to go to the next play. 70% mental, 20% physical, 10% luck. Sindhu with a nice long ball. Looking for Bagnan. Hamilton plays it back to Bagnan. Barrington fights well in that corner for the ball, not quite able to get it. Just a beautiful scene here tonight. Wonderful fall night. Fantastic sunset. Sort wow. of a golden wheat over <laughs> a, an earthly teal. <laughs> That's it. I couldn't have said it better myself. It seems as the as you get higher, it descends into a sapphire ocean. <laughs> How do you describe this, the green of the field right now? Oh, it's a sports paradise. <laughs> <laughs> that great green. Couldn't be a better side on a nice fall afternoon. It's really a meta metaphor for the world. The whole world you're playing field. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> got to find the beauty in it. You've got the blue, the blue of Munson as the oceans. You've got the white, bright Frontier jerseys. The lights exactly in the stadium. And the, the track is just a reminder to keep on running. Just keep on swimming. Ooh. Ooh. 
Baggins just got bodied there. Baggins fancy work. Wasn't quite enough. Munson. Ooh, weak try. Such a casual snatch out of the air by Bronchi there. Very passive aggressive almost as he <laughs> stares down the shooter. He said, get that weak sauce out. <laughs> <laughs> And that's, that's going to be the first half, I believe. I believe that is. Frontier in control here. 3-0 after the first half. <laughs> so, yeah, as we go into halftime, just, just a reminder, check, check out our broadcast on Channel 12 in the Four Towns and... Uh, FCAT Media on YouTube. Some cool stuff. And we'll see you at the start of the second half here tonight. A second. Sports game. Hope you, you all watching at home are just comfortable on your uh, sofa. Getting ready for a nice second half. Sunset is receding a little bit. <laughs> How would you describe these new colors in the air? Well, they're mostly the same colors. They've dimmed down a little bit. But you see a beautiful peach harvest ah. right in that corner. I'm allergic to peaches, so I don't really get the joy out of that. Oh, well, I mean, peach fuzz <laughs> doesn't quite count. But it seems like a bountiful, a bountiful summer right above that ominous black mountain. And it begins. Munson playing it back. Looking to ease it up. <laughs> Please chew with your mouth closed. <laughs> Finally, uh, another shot on goal by Munson early on. Immediate pressure, forcing that frontier defense back. So Carson, h hard to talk about the sports world without talking about all these players going to Oklahoma City Thunder. What do you think about that? Well, I think ever since other teams started doing it, that's what you got to do to stay alive in this league and win championships. Connor looking in the middle. Ooh, nice play. Fantastic goal line saved by the Munson defender. Would have surely been a goal by the Fleur, assisted by Bagdon. Could have been a hat trick. Could have been. The Fleur already with a brace. So if you were a betting man, Carson, <laughs> well, would you bet? Would you bet for the shutout here tonight, or do you think Munson could sneak one in? You know, based on the way this game has been going, I'd bet on the shutout. I'd bet on Bronchi in this frontier back line that's just done absolutely great tonight. I'm gonna have to disagree with you. I think Munson sneaks one in here. You think? And if I were a betting man. I would definitely go with that because the odds are probably... Well, we don't have to be <laughs> hypothetical in this case. Uh, <laughs> seeing as you've had your run-ins with the... We'll, <laughs> we'll put our wagers out the air. <laughs> Back and forth right now. Neither team can quite get the ball. Frontier with it. Finally returning safely to Georgita, who puts it back... Into the mix of things. Right, well played by Arnold. Oh, oh great ball to LaFleur. Oh, oh, inches shy of a hat trick. Wow. Great pass by Hamilton and couldn't have asked for anything better. Great job controlling the ball by Arnold, too. Just chested it to the ground.
Vineski, not with the hops to put that one in the net. Jock's doing the fancy footwork. Munson can't make something out of that. Starting to see some frustration on the body language from these Munson players. You can't really blame them, can you? No. Becoming a state champ last year, and now just being absolutely mauled by this Frontier team. This Frontier team, not, they're not slouches themselves. I mean. No, but after tonight, Munson will sink to a losing record. Not a good look for their season. Not necessarily bad, but need a little bit more. They do play schools much bigger than them in terms of population. That's true. Got to give them some credit there. No, Munson does not have the same numbers that all schools have. They do really have great athletes, though. I mean, last year, the outdoor track and field champions of Western Mass. Noah Malo leading that very talented team. And a hard-driven shot by Hamilton. Perfect placement of that bottom right corner. What a shot. Not sure if there was a slight deflection there, but that keeper is not happy with himself after that one. Terrific shot. Just gathered the ball and punctured it into the right side of the net. Able to really snipe that right corner. Be Hamilton's second goal this season. After his penalty kick a couple nights ago against Hampshire Regional at Hampshire. So this one has really turned into a route here. No other way to describe it. Now Munson just has to try to, try to manufacture whatever they can here, try to get some learning experience. Come away with some confidence in the coming games. Frontier goal in the 45th minute. Scored by number 10, Zach Hamilton. Good steal by Hineski, looking up. Assisted by number three, Ethan LaFleur. And that'll be Ethan LaFleur's third point of the game. He's accrued quite a hefty point total. Munson left wing can't quite control the ball as he throws a couple elbows en route to losing it to these quick frontier defenders. Frontier hoping to just keep on carrying the ball. Arnold looks for Bagdon, who looks for Lafleur. Not there. Frontier is not letting Munson take the ball out of their half the field. If you hear any interesting sounds on the broadcast, it's uh, just two teenage boys chowing down. Two hungry teenage boys. Yeah, you can't blame us. We got to eat. Everybody got to eat. <laughs> just like these Frontier players. Mm -hmm. They're eating out here right now. Good pass by Munson. Number 10 did not like that side tackle, did he? No, he didn't. Cleats up, gotta watch out for that. Not a very clean play. Good interruption by Hineski. Georgita looking for the send again. Oh, Lafleur has it, or he's best with it. But Bagdon comes away with it. Can't get around the Munson defender. Wonder if he should have uh, taken an extra touch, try to maneuver for a better shot. Bagman can't quite get the angle on that. Looking for his second.
plays it short. Now Frontier is three on three. Four on three. Great ball to the floor. Just offsides. I don't know if I agree with that offsides call. It looked like he was pretty well set behind the, the end line. Of course, this angle isn't, isn't necessarily the best one from the booth. No, the refs have a pretty good angle. Mm. Ball not quite good enough. Well, the floor keeps it alive. Not for long. Bronkic trying to preserve his, I believe, fourth shutout of the year. Not cr concrete on that fact, but been very reliant on the net. Oh. Fancy pass. Intention was good. Yeah, a little pep here for Munson. Talked about they need. It's always tough to see a team mentally defeated by a result which has not happened yet. Still get Patriots Falcons Super Bowl. Anything can happen. Bagden looking for a man. Lafleur can't get the power or accuracy to turn that into something. And we've got three subs coming in here. Ari Venegas, Timmy Barrington, and Rye Loveland making his uh, debut for the night. A mid chance of let's go Ryan from the student section. He certainly is a fan favorite. Oh. Another offsides call. How many are there gonna be? Frontier has got to keep in mind that back line and as they move and try and force the players offsides. Got to give Munson some credit for pulling up though. It's about their only defensive strategy that's worked so far. Mm -hmm. Trying to use his body to take the guy up and ends up getting taken out himself. Good physicality by the midfielder. Just nothing to get behind this frontier back line right now. No, they are sturdy as a wall. After last game, Dale Tottenham, head coach, said they pride themselves in their defense, and that's definitely on display here tonight. Bagden with a fancy pass to Arnold. Playing it back to Hamilton. Plays it back to Jocks. Great move to shake defender there. Here's the question of the night for you, Karsten. I'm ready. With your great analytical mind. Mm -hmm. Would you take the hardest workers in the world as a head coach or the best talent in the world? As a head coach? As a head coach. Where I'm choosing the head coach or I am the head you coach? You are the head coach. the head coach. You are the head coach, general manager. You've got a lot riding on your team success. Do you want the best talent or the best workers? Are we talking about the sport of soccer here? We're just talking about sport in general. Well, speaking specifically on the sport of soccer, I would want the talent. I want to have the opportunity to whip them into shape. Try to instill that work ethic. Force my discipline on them to yep, instill <laughs> that work ethic. Please elaborate on your discipline. <laughs> well, I wouldn't take any of it from these players. <laughs> any of what? Any of it. <laughs> what would be your go to form of punishment of the coach? Well, I wouldn't look forward to a. Uh, <laughs> punishment so much, but just a, a hard hand. <laughs> I hope you're not talking about hitting no, the No, this is, this is a metaphorical <laughs> hard hand. 
I would keep my players in line one way or the other, and they would know where they stand in relation to me. <laughs> Which is obviously beneath you. <laughs> Am I right? As a general manager or manager <laughs> as a, of a team, that would be beneath me. Correct. Harness their talent. That would be my method. <laughs> yeah. Just have faith in my uh, abilities as a coach <laughs> to get the best out of my players. Exactly. Well, me personally, I take the hard workers because, you know what? What's that quote again? Um, hard work meets talent, and talent fails to work hard. That's it. You know, I'd uh, like to see a study about that. <laughs> a scientific study supporting that claim. I mean, it, I, it must be true. It's such a well known quote, you know. Can't believe everything you read. <laughs> If you really think about it philosophically, like Aristotle would, you, you know, you want the hard workers. That's true. Harder to uh, teach talent than hard work, though. True. But there's a certain grit that just not everyone has. That's true. That's a hard question. Positives in both areas. Bagden looking to calm this kick and run offense right now, which is resumed. Got about 25 minutes to go here in the second half. Frontier is up 4 0 if you're just joining us. Bagden could have looked for goal there. Yeah, I don't think they Instead looking for the assist. A little too unselfish there, maybe. True, I don't think anybody would have blamed him if he were to take a rip right there and go for goal. I think we're getting some looks <laughs> from down there. Yeah, you know, Brandon Robinson and Jeremy Zika, two great fans down there, acknowledging the booth. Love to see it. Timmy looking up to Bagden. Oh. Can't even control this Munson player just running through players. And Connor Wakis will come in the game for Ethan Fleur. Once again, a well end rest for him. Tottenham proving he is an avid substituter. Exactly. Well, in a game like this, you might as well get your get your bench player some experience. Yep. Maybe I'd like to see Graves get a few more <laughs> minutes, though. So. Yeah, you love to see him come off the bench. Always a high energy player. When you work so hard in practice, you deserve, you deserve to see some minutes in games. Exactly. Timmy looking up to Venegas. He's trying to track that ball down. And shoves a Munson player, whether... Very clear foul there. By accident or in frustration. How would you describe the sky now? It's gotten a little darker, that's for well, sure. The darkness is um, quite imposing now in the sky. There seems to be a little glimmer of light beyond that horizon. Sort of almost brown in a way. Sort of like a darkened almond. <laughs> <laughs> Not a peanut? Not a peanut. Peanut is a little too light for the situation. Uh, you need the nice light outside. I was thinking like a almost like a walnut. You know, just if you look far enough, right on top of that horizon, <laughs> I could understand well in that, in that situation. <laughs> Something nutty, for sure. Exactly. Because how could you look at this guy and not think about nuts? True, and with uh, tree nuts. <laughs> legal at Frontier now. <laughs> that, that is big news. We, we've got to talk about this. This year, Frontier Regional. In the past, we've been a nut-free school completely. No nuts allowed. But starting this year... 
it, it's a not safe zone, not a not free zone. Now we are aware of not out. <laughs> exactly. I think a great leadership decision by the administration at Friendly Regional School. It really opens up the menu choices yeah. and just the availability of a great source of protein yeah. and fiber. As a kid that relies on my peanut butter and jelly sandwich, it's, it's really been electrated. You, you like to see that happen. <laughs> yeah. You like to see young boys and girls <laughs> getting to feast on the same things that a young Alex Sharp once feasted on. <laughs> exactly. It's been life changing. All this life changing is this <laughs> outstanding performance by Frontier tonight, <laughs> dominating both sides of the ball. Yeah. That's true. Loveland getting into it. Frontier playing with a, now a high percentage of subs and putting two more in in the form of Sam Felton Emmerich, sophomore, Ooh, and Noah Gray, just over the once top. again. Back in that a little more time than he thought, I think, right there. And Loveland coming out just as quickly as he came. And that's going to be Noah Gray. You called for it, and Topman responded. Now would be a nice time for one of these Frontier substitute players to really impress everyone and just net a goal. Get their name in the paper. Get some recognition from Tottenham as they will be part of this program for many years to come. I always like to say, though, there, there are many ways to have your impact felt in a game without scoring. I think scoring is a bit overrated, to be honest. Well, scoring may win games, but that is true. Tottenham will notice if you perform well. Hamilton with a nice chip pass. With Venegas and Wakis both looking for a goal there. Yeah. Neither can quite get it. Dale Tottenham, just a great coach here for Frontier. Really preaches positivity. In fact, I've heard he believes that you can live forever as long as you stay positive. Very interesting outlook on life. You know, great philosophers over the years have uh, had many incredible outlooks, and I must say that that stands up there with, uh, with the best of them. <laughs> I agree. Now put Dale Thomas' name down in the, <laughs> in the history books. With Patriarch and Aristotle. And Euclid. Exactly. Just under 20 minutes to go here. Peter Brock is still holding on to that shutout in front here. Hold, seems to be holding quite tightly to a 4-0 lead. To be honest, can't see this uh, changing very much for the remainder of the game. Munson with a cross. That's not happening in George Eakes' house. We are out of view of it right now, but I must say there's a great almost full moon tonight. I'm sure the players have noticed it. Well, I haven't. <laughs> well, like I said, we are out of view of it. It's right behind us. Set piece from Munson does not quite go well. Great effort by Barrington to gain possession for the Red Hawks. Georgita looking for another send, I expect, and here we are. Baggin looking to carry this up. Another offside. Munson all night has done a great job pulling their back line up and catching the Red Hawks off guard here. Well, these frontier strikers really need to keep in mind that offsides is a thing, <laughs> and you must be behind that Munson line when that ball is kicked because there have been very many opportunities that have just been. At, at least five yeah. offsides penalties, I would say more. Potential goals right there, and the Strikers been a little more clever about starting their run. Strikers have still done a very great job though. Bagan calling for the ball. Venegas. 
Opportunity up here. Doesn't quite go for goal or cross it. Easily collected by the keeper. And it's played nicely. Trying to ease that ball up in a controlled way. Graves with it now. Looking for the chip to Venegas who can't quite finesse that ball over the top of his head. Substitutes coming on here for the Red Hawks. Pretty much cleaning off the entire bench. And the crowd recognizes the efforts of the starting players as so they drive out the field. Just been a great effort by Venegas. Jacques DeMeo, Georgita, Hamilton. I believe that's it. center. So I really think we should uh, mention the passing of Tom Petty, musical legend, passed away earlier today, believed heart attack. A big blow today, but I know he's had a big impact on, on your life, Preston, as you're a big fan of him. Yes, he has. Tom Patty, listened to him for many years. Just uh, really able to appreciate his musical talent over the last few years as uh, he made his name big in the 70s and 80s with the Heartbreakers until he turned solo at around, uh, I want to say, early 80s, coming out with many hits in between, over a dozen chart toppers in the U.S. Billboard, and many albums. He also accrued uh, Grammy nominations, among other musical nominations in his colorful career. Yeah. Just an artistic genius, so definitely a big blow. An odd situation with him uh, this afternoon is his death was announced and then retracted based on the uh, fact that it was not confirmed yet. Yeah. R rumors just fly so fast. And I must ask, has it been officially confirmed? Yes, I just, it, I just saw it has been confirmed. It would have been too shocking for a death announcement like that to come out, and then an hour later for it to turn out that he was truly alive. Substitutes here for Frontier holding their own thus far. Yes, really, uh, really showing their salt on this, on this field tonight. Oh, that's a new one. Well, loads more of that came from. <laughs> Another philosophical question: salt or sugar? Ooh. Both are necessary for a human to live. Both with uh, downsides to overconsumption, but also <laughs> great downsides to underconsumption. I'd go with sugar myself. Mm. I'm not one to be salty. Interesting decision by 
Frontier defender choosing to clear that out of bounds. One thing a little disappointing about this game is we did not get to see the train go by tonight. No, there was no train. Usually a regular showing at these great big games, but you know, 12 minutes left, we might get our wish. I think it's a little late now. I think, I think the, yeah, maybe. Let's not give up hope. Uh, you may be an expert on planes, but uh, <laughs> trains is a whole other story. Amtrak though now, going all the way up to Vermont from, I believe, Northampton, if you want to hop on. And if you're lucky, you might ride right by a Frontier night game. It's true. Two great cities. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> Northampton and uh, I assume Vermont. <laughs> whatever other city that uh, is in Vermont, since Vermont's such a wonderful place, as you know very well yourself, having uh, gone there many times, owning multiple houses <laughs> in the area. <laughs> No. I wish. The real estate kingpin <laughs> of the north. I believe is what I've heard you refer to as, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I don't think so. Rumors fly, rumors fly. Exactly. So we can confirm the man in the golf cart is a photographer, I think, as he's getting the other angle now over here. You know, he could uh, he could just, could just <coughs> really be wanting to be near that Munson net, see all those goal scores. Right there. But most likely a photographer. Here we go. Munson may, might have something going here. And yeah, that's going to get smaller. Oh, no. Able to pull that out. That's Finally, with soon. the subs out. And there's a goal from Munson. There is a goal, finally. The subs just... Donkey's got to be a little upset losing the shot out there. Yep. But I believe when we spoke of this earlier, I predicted that Munson would put a goal in. And I think we made a little wager on this. You know, I don't know if our wager was ever uh, <laughs> committed. Oh, well, you know, I think it might have been. Yeah, we can, we can check over the tape. Uh, <laughs> I, think see it was, was I think it was made off the tape. Oh, well, I'm sure there must be a record of that somewhere. Uh, maybe not. It was a gentleman's wager. I'm sure you won't back off of that. Uh, I would never <laughs> back off a gentleman's wager. Had one been made. <laughs> well, I would never bet against these Frontier Red Hawks. Well, it seems like you... Uh, well, I bet against them to the shutout, but I, I knew all along they would win. I could never lose faith in that. Chance of Let's Go Wankus raining, raining out over the stadium. Although his name is Wankus, he seems, uh, <laughs> some people choose to say it Wankus. A too aggressive from our number 14 there on Hamilton. Now the fans are getting a little rowdy. Been long enough. You know, it's a teenage brain, I think, the later it gets, the uh, crazier, crazier they get. Munson goal in the 71st Ooh, nice minute. We are witnesses Scored to that. Scored by number six, Kyle Monahan. Number six, Kyle Monahan with the goal. If you can't hear that 11, over the loudspeaker. Jordan, Jaden Messina. Assisted by number 11, Jaden Messina. Jordan, Jaden Messina. Good collection by Bronchi. It's tapped out of his hands, but. Munson's got, shrug that off. Munson's got to be happy to salvage a goal here tonight. Definitely don't want to go on the road and get shut out. Or get shut out anyway, for that matter. No, especially when wins are so crucial at this point in the season. But again, such a talented frontier team. I expect that they thought that this result was possible. Oh. Hamilton really playing massive roles in offense and defense right now, coming back to help these frontier substitute defenders. It's really getting rowdy here up there. 
<laughs> Hearing some shouts from the Frontier student section. Might not be all in good nature, but it's part of sport. Yes, it is. Let's hope that they don't attract the attention of uh, any referees tonight. Yeah, it looks like Munson's going to make a few subs here. 23 and number 16 coming in. We haven't seen them so far tonight. Also, uh, Ryan Loveland getting ready to come in for the second time. And Georgita, it seems. And look, look for this number 17 to take a shot and goal here. I'd say it's definitely crossing through his mind at this point. The wall is made up of Hineski, Kip Newman, and Sam Batiste, it looks like. He's got that right side wide open. He's going to take it, curl it. A good try. But not fast enough for Bronk. He was able to see its slow path. Fist that out of there. Just dropped a skittle, but no need to worry. Five second rule. Let's hope that was under five seconds. Oh, it definitely was. I've got that inner clock. Uh, that inner clock that uh, so many runners <coughs> work years on achieving. Exactly. <laughs> Once you're trying to get it out of that corner. Bagden, Georgita, Loveland, and Jax will come on. It'll be Hineski, Batisti, Graves, and Felton Emmerich coming off the pitch after a great showing, although letting up that long goal. Great job by Tottenham really getting everyone involved in the game. Have we seen Hannah Wells make an appearance? Uh, you know, I'm not sure. That, that seems to be him, right there, number one. He'll be coming back next year as a senior. Not too much, there are a good number of seniors, but Frontier won't be losing everyone after this season. No, they'll be able to recover after this year. And a great send by Georgie. Lafleur looking for Hannah Wells on the run. He can't quite control it. But Hamilton comes back in. Now Bagden looking up. That's back and forth right now. And four and a half minutes to go here. Frontier players already unlacing. Just waiting for this game to be over. Come away with this fantastic win. It ain't over to the fat lady sings. Crazier things have happened. This is true, this is true. But definitely the odds are heavily, 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 heavily in favor of the Red Ox. <laughs> if we were betting men, this would be a fantastic opportunity to uh, make some quick, uh, quick cash. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. I mean, if you're betting on Frontier, you're not winning much. And if you're betting on Munson, you're betting on losing cars. Well, which way would you bet? I would bet on Frontier. Well, the odds are so heavily in their favor, you wouldn't, you wouldn't make much of a payday, would you? I'd still make a payday. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to get, get the lines up for these high school games. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously heavily illegal and all, but... Venegas not quite able to get under that header. Wick is looking to send it back. to control it, can't quite get his foot around that ball. But Venegas takes it to the face. 
You gotta sacrifice yourself for your team. Whether uh, on purpose or, or not. two minutes to play, so the clock will be kept by the rest for the remainder of this one. Gronky nonchalantly collects that. Definitely not a very strenuous night for him tonight. No, except for that one, uh, one moment. for Wakefield. This one's just about over tonight. Any uh, bottom lines you'd like to, to talk about before this one's over? Uh, both teams need to look forward. Munson needs to uh, start getting some wins to hope to continue their season, hope to have their seniors play a little bit more games. And Frontier, after this win, have secured a playoff spot. And now we're just looking to secure that one seed yeah. and make a really good run to their third consecutive Western Mass title. And uh, state championship berth, which would be their first in school history. Yeah, and the first team in all of Western Mass to clinch a postseason spot, so some noteworthy stuff going on here. Frontier has a chance to do something that... And here comes done. the train. I knew it, Alex. I knew it. <laughs> Love to see that here tonight. What time is it? It's train time. That is true. Gotta love the whole That'll put the end of this respect. one. This is a cargo train here tonight. The conductor tooting the horn. Congratulating Frontier on their win, no doubt. Of course. Always great Frontier fans, these uh, conductors are. You really called that one, man. Very impressed. I, I had a feeling, I had a feeling. Oh. And that'll do it. Frontier steps up and Comes out with the victory, four to one. Barrington over showing, uh, showing hard over height there. Yeah, taking that. And talking stroke. a little smack on his way off the field. It looks like. You'll love to see that. Munson not too happy with this result. That's a great game by Frontier, and uh, thank you, thanks everyone for watching. All right, if you uh, check out our broadcast on Channel 12 in the Four Towns, FCAT Media, our YouTube channel to watch FRS sports as well as FRS events, plays, concerts, and more. This is a great performance by Frontier, by both teams really. Frontier just being the better team out of the gates and just putting the pressure on Munson back line all night until eventually it's too much for Munson, laying up those four goals. Two to Hamilton, two to one to Bagdon. Two to Lafleur, one to Hamilton, and one to Bagdon. Yeah, an all around performance by Frontier tonight. Defense played great, offense played great, and really Munson, Munson had nothing going for him. Yeah, so thank you for watching Frontier Community Access Television's broadcast of tonight's soccer matchup, which was against Munson. And thank you to our underwriters for tonight's game, provided by the law office of Daniel F. Graves in Greenfield, focusing on real estate, estate planning, and business law. dgraveslaw at gmail.com. I'm Karsten. And I'm Alex. Thank you for watching.